of God. The Bible is the only written record that can show the way. The concept of explaining God, he brought to our attention the following scriptures. Romans chapter 1 verses 19 and 20, and I've written this out rather than recite it for you because I want you to see it with its full impact. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, in the human race, in every human individual. For God hath showed it unto them. Now, that's amazing. The little girl didn't ask, uh, is there a God? Explain. If there's a God, she said, explain God. We all begin knowing that fact. We know there is a God. God hath showed it unto them and within them. Watch this. The scripture states in Romans 1, For the invisible things of him, of God, those things we can't see, those things we can't measure in a test tube and calibrate in a laboratory, those things we cannot analyze from a distance in the macrocosm, the invisible things of him from the creation of the world, the way things are put together, that which we can see, the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they, mankind, we, are without excuse. Now that is an incredible thing, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him, from the creation of the world, from the tangible things we can measure, are clearly seen, being understood by those things that are made, so that we're without excuse. Now let's examine that for a moment. What do we find in the physical universe that we can observe, that we can measure, and we can place in our scientific analysis, first of all, space. Space is everywhere. But the fabric of space is not alone. Wherever you find space, you find it materialized into energy and mass. Wherever you look, you can't have empty space. There is no empty space. Even the energy of this space fabric itself can be transferred into mass. So there is no space without energy slash mass. And that space is calibrated in the motion of time. So we have space, mass slash energy, and time, all in one. You don't simply have time and space and mass, you have space manifesting its energy and mass in a forward motion of time. All three. That brings us to the triune God. The Jews were right. The Jewish scriptures write, God is one. But the Jewish scriptures also point out that God has a son, a manifestation. And the New Testament displays that manifestation. So we have space representing God the Father everywhere. Mass representing the second person of the Trinity, Jesus Christ, who also observes everywhere, but manifests himself in time. And then we have time itself, where the Holy Spirit honors Jesus Christ. He came to honor the Son, and the Holy Spirit is represented by time. Time is not the Holy Spirit, but the physical things of the world can now demonstrate to us the reality of God. God exists, and he exists in a triune nature, not three separate persons. It is not one plus one plus one. It is one times one times one. It's one. That brings us to the final statement. Explain God. Well, we've seen God. Moses saw his hinder parts, that is, he saw where God had been. And that's significant. 
But Thomas and the other apostles said, Jesus, show us the Father. And he said, fellas, how is it that I've been with you all this time? If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Explain God. Well, to explain God, you have to look at Jesus Christ. The way he loved children and like that father, put little children on his lap and said, let them come, suffer them to come. Don't hold them away. I have a special relationship with the little children. I love them all, all the children of the world. So if you watch Jesus then, even as a youngster in the flesh, counseling, disputing with the doctors and the lawyers in the temple, he knew all of the law. He was eternity met in time. Watch Jesus. Watch him raise the dead and Lazarus and heal the brokenhearted. Watch him go to Calvary and die for our sins. Watch him as they placed his cold body in a tomb. Watch him as he arises from the dead. Explain God right now. He is knocking at your heart. If any man will open the door, he said, I will come in. I'll sup with him and he with me. Would you right now pray this simple prayer? Just pray, Lord Jesus, I know you're knocking at my heart. You're embracing me. Right now, I open my heart to you. Come in, Lord Jesus, right now and save me forever. I will serve you with all my heart. If you prayed that simple prayer, see, God is everywhere. Jesus is alive. If you prayed that simple prayer, the God of the universe stepped into your heart. And you know because you have met him. Not only that there is a God for certain, but you know who that God is. He's the God of the Bible. And he sent his son, the promise of the Bible, to the human race. Praise God that he Creation is alive. Has been sponsored by Trinity Broadcasting Network. And only with your love gift of support can this program stay on the air. So write to Creation in the 21st Century. P.O. Box A, Santa Ana, California, 92711. Information like you've received today is available at the Creation Evidence Museum. In printed form, in videos, we even have a coloring book for the kids. Just call or write us at Creation Evidence Museum, P.O. Box 309, Glen Rose, Texas, 76043, area code 254-897-3200, or check us out on the web, creationevidence.org.